Okay, we are back. This is me continuing my trend of recording all of the audio for the Let's Plays for this week before actually editing each episode and finalizing the previous episode. So hopefully everything is working. I'm crossing my fingers. In fact, I just crossed an even number of fingers then, so that's not that's not good. So I need to cross an odd number of fingers because that is the way luck works. I just uh, had a bit to eat and took a break, and now we are back into it. All right, this episode is actually going to have uh, a really famous sequence in it, and I thought it was really, really funny when I first saw it. Classic, classic Nintendo humor. I think it's really, really good. But um, here we go. We are now in Death Mountain Trail. Just got to switch to the new shield here. This is how it works. See, you can't actually hold it up. Like a like the like your wooden shield because it's too big for you. So I have a I have quite a bit of uh, luck with these um, tektites here, these um, spider this reptile spider things. Insect actually, they're, they're more insect things. Um, but this particular one gives me a lot of trouble, as you can see. There's a or here, sorry, there's a gold sculptula in there, and we can't get it yet. We need some way to break down rock walls and luckily there is a tool for this purpose here is um me absolutely trying and failing oh wait no it's not that tech tide it must be another one but um this is gonna be really embarrassing and when i finally get out of the dungeon <laughs> it's just taking me to town okay so i do yeah i'm just not i think they jump as you shoot, I think they know when you're shooting. So as you can see, having lots of hearts saves you from dying. <laughs> I know it seems a little um, obvious, but you know if we only had three hearts from not looking at um or four hearts from not actually collecting the heart pieces, you know we'd be in real trouble right now. I wonder what it's like to eat stones. I wonder what kind of you know, nutrition you could get out of that. I think animals have to eat organic matter in order to get energy. You know, you can't eat inorganic matter like rocks. I don't think it works like that. So obviously he's explaining to us the dungeon. He's explaining why the dungeon is like it is and probably setting up some sort of explanation for why the dungeon is cursed or full of monsters in the first place. So there it is, there's the, uh, let's, let's get, get a good look at this guy. Maybe I'll make out the thumbnail. Not sure, I should probably not tell you what I'm going to make the thumbnail of. <laughs> so day, day, the day-night cycle occurs here. And we got, just got all our hearts back. I think the game's pretty forgiving, actually. I wonder if the Master Quest has some health-limiting mechanisms like that. I'm not sure. not going to talk to that guy. Sometimes the dialogue is not, not that necessary. To make sure we don't get hit by that guy. I do play chicken with him a few times in, a, in some later episodes. I think something happens in the middle of, the, of that rock circle there, but I'm not sure what it is. Alright, now we're heading into Goron City. Another cinematic sequence. As you can see, there's multiple levels, and um, there's a platform suspended in the middle, and there's some uh, some rocks over there that we can't quite move yet. So I think the first thing that we need to do is we need to head down a few levels and explore this area a little bit. So we've got some pots here. Quite a bit of money, actually. You can you can actually get quite a bit of money by smashing pots in this uh, in this city, and it's really confusing. It's like a, it's a complete maze. Actually, here's a bomb flower. As you can see, we can't pick these up yet. It's uh, we're not able to. I don't think we're strong enough. But we'll uh, we'll we'll be getting something pretty soon in order to solve that problem. And you can't jump out into the middle of this pot, which is uh, which is annoying. So we can see some braziers around here. There seems to be a door with something that looks like a triforce on it. It looks like 
Yeah, it look, kind of looks like Sheik's insignia. So let's uh, let's play the the good old messengers tune, the Zelda's lullaby. So coming coming up now, the sequence that I love so much. It's fantastic. This guy doesn't look very happy. I can't talk to him because I'm having problems. So this is him. He looks kind of buff here, but when he dances... Oh, I just gave it away, but when he dances, he doesn't look so buff. I don't know. <laughs> no, he's not very impressed, is he? It's also got a very short tempo. <laughs> Again, more exposition about why the dungeon needs uh, needs clearing out. There's a way to solve this problem, and over here, just flagging a little bit that you can uh, you can move that eventually. You'll be able to move that um that stone. All right. <laughs> Let's see if I can get the song right. Because <laughs> I've been playing the Sun song so much, it's stuck in my head. Here we go. I love this bit. That's fantastic. <laughs> so it's such such great Nintendo humor. That's that's classic Nintendo humor. This, uh, this particular item is going to be instrumental in helping us clear the dungeon. We, we absolutely need it. And it's also important to get, you know, past the first few phases of the game when you don't have, surprise, surprise, the bomb bag. So you do need the bomb bag. Right, the next thing that we need to do is light those braziers outside that I, I showed showed you guys. So I actually had a, a bit of problems actually working out that I how to light the braziers and then I remembered. So there was a little bit of cutting there, a little bit of editing. So you light your Deku stick in that fire there. And I decided to um, <laughs> relight the Deku stick every time. Which is probably not a very efficient way of going about solving this puzzle, but um, I didn't want my, my Deku stick to burn out and waste, uh, waste the whole trip. Alright, now that uh, pot is rolling around. Alright, next that we have to do is we actually have to head back to the Lost Woods. So we'll, we'll just open up the shop here. We need to head to the Lost Woods in order to get a few more um, heart pieces and some more upgrades for different items. And also just to complete the next phase of the mask trading sequence. So we're coming, to, we're coming to the end of the episode now, but never fear, there will always be an, another one in, <laughs> tomorrow, the next day. 
So here's the Lost Woods here. And luckily now that we have the bomb bracelet, or the Goron bracelet, we can, um... I don't think that's gonna blow up the other bombs. It's not, not, uh, not, not close enough. Yeah, it didn't. There'll always be another episode. Now that we have the Goron bracelets, we'll be able to op basically pick up these bomb flowers. Which is really useful. I think now that we have been to... No, we've already got the, the bugs. I thought maybe um, you ha this, this particular sequence triggers you'd be able to pick up bugs. But anyway, we'll leave this here. I'll see you guys next time for the next episode where we uh, do some more rooting around in the Lost Woods. There's actually quite a bit of stuff that we have to do in the Lost Woods before we move on to the next section. But um, now that we have the bomb flower um, bracelet, we, uh, we stand a good chance of getting a bit further. Alright, I'll see you guys next time.